ஸ்டார்ட் ஸ்ட்ரீமிங் கொடுத்துருந்தேன் டெஸ்க்டாப் ஆடியா வந்து நீங்கள் இது பண்ணி கேட்டு ஓபிஎஸ்டா டெஸ்க்டாப் சாரி எந்த ஆடியோ வந்து இல்லையா அது Good morning to one and all. On behalf of SCAD College of Engineering and Technology, I welcome you all for the today's webinar HVAC Engineering Design and Applications. First of all, I thank the Lord who protected us during this pandemic days and also made us to learn new technologies through this social media platform. Before we start, I would like to present a brief note about our college, SCAD College of Engineering and Technology. In short, with love and pride, we call it as SCAD set. We are offering five undergraduate courses and three postgraduate courses. We have well-equipped labs as well as library with more than 50,000 volume of books. We have 2,500 online journals and also 1,500 e-books plus 100 plus magazines. In the last academic year, we secured 100% results in more than 25 subjects. We are consistently providing more than 90% placement for the past five years. In the last academic year, we have conducted 30 plus on-campus drives in which 400 placement offers were received to the students with an annual package of 3 lakhs per annum. With this short note about our institution, I would like to introduce our today's resource person, Dr. Frederick John Charles, MEP Manager in ALEC, Dubai. He obtained his BE degree in Mechanical Engineering from CSA Institute of Technology in the year 2001 and completed his ME degree in the field of computer aided design from SRM University in 2002. Also, he completed his doctorate degree in the field of hybrid composites from Bharat University in 2009. He has published many international journals as well as national journals. He started his career on January 2003 as a mechanical engineer with a specialization in heating, ventilation and air conditioning design and construction of building services. As a design team leader, he has done HVAC design of multi-storey six towers buildings and it is a common podium for high-rise building with various sophisticated MEP system. As MEP manager, managed all technical and commercial aspects of MEP installation and to deliver the job with quality which are not compromised at all. As a part of his work, he also traveled to many Asian as well as European countries and did many multinational projects. So some of the projects which I would like to say are the uh, Doha Festival City, Dubai Festival City and the Dubai International Airport and also the BDR South Bridge System and also he has done many pro projects. His career responsibility, he worked as a MEP coordinator, project manager, a project electrical engineer as well as a mechanical engineer in many companies. We are very lucky to have such an eminent personality as today's resource person. We welcome you sir on behalf of the SCAD management and department of mechanical engineering. Dear participants, we welcome you all for today's webinar. You can post all your queries in the chat box which will be answered by our resource person at the end of the session. After filling the feedback form, you will receive your e-certificate in your registered email account. Now without wasting much time, I request Dr. Frederick John Tolls to take over the session. Over to you sir. Thank you sir. Frederick sir. Good morning to all. Yeah, good morning to all. Okay, thank you for this opportunity for the webinar. During this pandemic situation, um, the college, SCAD Engineering College, have taken an initiative to keep the students learning and giving an opportunity to grow in their uh, career paths. Okay, first of all, I thank the Almechi. Uh, because of Almechi, I'm here and um, that's this gift for me. And I again thank my parents who educated and lifted me to this level and the teachers who nurtured me and taken me to the knowledge and uh, achieved my degree. And again, I thank the company, the company Alec, which was I'm working for um, the past 11 years. Uh, here it's the opportunity to thank the company because I have uh, loyalty to my company because I done my PhD in the during my work because it is a lot of people ask me how's her, how you done your PhD during the industry being working in an industry because that's a lot of students who are listening and a lot of students who are viewing this uh, live streaming I'm telling them 
if you are that is doesn't mean you have to be a lecturer then you can do your phd you can be in industry also you can do your phd the thing is the desire which is in your heart okay set your goals reach your um, position when you what you thought, thought in your mind okay so that was my key focus to achieve a phd okay there is a good challenge in my uh, uh, in my um, during my time how i am going to do my phd do being in industry, uh, working in the industry sector okay so i made made my plan one day i talked to my company managing director that i am um, i want to do a phd so i need to you are give an noc the company director immediately said give the noc immediately and frederick needs this uh, noc uh, letter because most of the industry thinks that some companies thinks that okay being and working in industry how if he, he, he will be focused on his studies not on the work okay so i am I, i was thinking in that dilemma situation but the company thought that frederick can he can grow in his career path as well as he can do some contribution to the folks and he will be a good successful person so that motivated me and that uh, noc letter was a good um uh, chance for me to apply my uh, phd and i get through the phd and i was very struggling hard to finish it but god grace i have got that uh, phd and the reason why i am saying here is lot of students who are viewing this uh, video they should be very uh, don't worry about how i am going to reach if you have a bill definitely you are going to succeed and the teachers who are make uh, making this video for you guys definitely they have a good intention in the mind the students of scad engineering college they wants to lead and they have to be a successful engineers in the world and they have they have a good focus in you guys so that's why the web webinar is arranged so i have, first of all i have to thank the college okay lot of colleges are doing but specifically on scad engineering college when the uh, when i got a invitation i immediately accepted but only i have a Uh, schedule my timing when what is the date i can give an uh, schedule for the day so i i was so very um, I, usually i am not little bit stay away from uh, other commitments but for students i give my first priority because i have came across some very uh, uh, my students in the life so i want to get the students who are coming out they need a guidance that's what needed at the situation what i finish my degree what i am going to reach what is the, what is what are the challenges currently now we are facing what uh, what's the challenge what is the latest technology you if you are doing some technology learning something what good old days you do and reach to the market and industry then you are out of focus so the college of sky engineering college it arranged this seminar and i am interested to participate this seminar and i am thanking to the college that your college is doing a good work during this pandemic situation first of all i thank to the principal dr abi so that is a good leader who is keeping their thoughts and making nurturing the students to get on to the uh, new challenges in the market and in the industry so he is thinking about that so the good leader who is challenge who is making this talk of thoughts and arranging this seminar i thank him thank you dr abi for his initiative and he is supported by Dr. Kannan, the HOD of Mechanical Engineering, who is making uh, the arrangements and who, who is making new new uh, trends which is there in the market. He is collecting. I, I I can see his initiatives in this um, webinar because I have a talk with him on uh, on um, uh, Thursday or Wednesday, so uh, I can hear it from him the way how he was uh, thinking of. He was asking me to help the presentation how it is to be and how it is. what the students need and what the college is looking for okay i thank you dr kannan for his support on this um, again and all the teaching staff of scad okay that is a good team and a good college who makes that team uh, who makes the um, the college and the students to bring us a good engineer that's a good support from the college thanks for the scad all teaching staff and a special thanks to dr jomax i know the dr jomax from previously is a good uh, person and he is one of um, our i know well known person and and thank you him for his support and um, uh, uh, inviting me to give, give this opportunity for the webinar okay let's go on to the uh, subject now okay 
OK. OK, the topic is here is HVC engineering design and application, OK? What's HVC? What's HVC do? And what we are going to see on design and application here, OK? To talk about that, I have to bring to the uh, country where I am working and the, what the country is uh, made the business and the engineers who are there here in this uh, part of region, OK? Everyone knows about Dubai, OK? We can see a lot of people knows about Dubai, and Dubai is one of the um, best country, where the peace living uh, country in the world, and it have boasts a world tallest man-made free static structure. I think everyone knows about Dubai. Okay, if anybody says, okay, the world tallest tower, they say, yeah, it's uh, Dubai. So Burj Khalifa is the tallest tower, and it is having the world largest um, acrylic uh, uh, acrylic uh, aquarium. It's, a, it's in the uh, world largest one. You can see on the right corner of the bottom, that is the biggest aquarium. And you can see the world biggest mall, which is next to, on the tallest tower next to here, this is the world um, biggest uh, mall. That's one roof you can see on uh, the biggest mall. And a man-made island, island, that is the Palm Chimera. So anyone knows about the Dubai, these are the five major, big, biggest thing, which from apart from the world, people are looking, okay? Why HVC is very important here in this part of the world in Dubai? Because of the climatic condition, okay? Dubai is having a climate condition, like a desert climate is there, with very, very mild winters and very hot and sunny summers, and the humidity of the Persian Gulf makes the heat unbearable, okay? So, it's a, it's a hot, sunny uh, climatic conditions, and you have winter also, during the period of November, December, you will have a very freezing temperature also. So people who live in Dubai, they love the summer and love this winter also. Okay? So now the questions in front of this uh, seminar. Why we need this seminar? Okay? Everybody see, I gave an introduction. Now we are going to the subject. What's the question? Why we need this to know about the HVC? Okay? So we want to know the questions. The viewers have the questions. Nobody is spending time to just to see we will something, okay, I have a seminar, I'm going to sit and spend the time. Definitely, you need to get something out of this seminar. You need to get something. You are expecting something from this teacher, and he's giving, delivering something. So what is that? I'm going to say, what is HVC? Okay. Next one is, why should I know about HVC? Second question. Okay. That question is, how will it benefit myself? Okay. And next one is, is it for gaining a knowledge? Okay. The next one is, is it helps me as career guidance for job opportunity? Okay. So there are five questions as part of a viewer. I am sitting from your side and asking the speaker, okay, who is me, these questions. Okay. I'm sure I'm going to give these questions answers in the following slides. Okay. So what should I do? Okay, now the question is what should I do? You should watch the following slides. Okay, so, <coughs> okay, okay, everybody wants to know what is HVAC. Okay, HVAC is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay, when I am doing my degree, there are a lot of this abbreviations are there. What is BLSI? I don't know. What is HVAC? I don't know. Like this abbreviations put on my mind because when I see the newspaper, any opportunities papers, I get to know what is the, there is opportunity for uh, HVAC, um, BLSI design. I was thinking, what is that? What is this technology? Okay, here is the answer. HVAC means heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay. Okay, what is H heating means heating and cooling. Okay. The next one is ventilation. Okay. The next one is air conditioning. Okay. So now we are going to see what is heating and cooling. Okay. What is it? anybody knows? Everybody knows that heating and cooling. If anybody know or doesn't know, everybody in the common life they know what is heating and cooling. Okay. In terms of the air conditioning, what does it helps? Okay. Heating is widely used in the cold countries. Okay. If you are going to UK, the temperature is very freezing. Okay, 
During winter, you need heaters. If you go to the whole house, you will have heaters which will give blow you warm air. Okay. Somebody are in uh, going to the um, uh, uh, hill stations like Kodakana Ruti, there you have heaters. Okay. You will go to the heaters and they will put heaters and it will blow heat, hot air. Okay. Same opposite. When you have a cold weather, okay, you need a cold weather. When you are in a particularly in this uh, hot sunny climate, you need chilled cool air. Okay, that's why cooling is here in the Middle East areas. Okay, heating and cooling. Okay, what is ventilation? Okay, ventilation is required. Okay, why we need a ventilation? Ventilation is required for a human who stays in a room need ventilation anybody comes to your house immediately they ask oh it is i'm not uh, facing some uh, suffocation or i'm it is not getting good ventilation so they go and open the windows go and open the doors to get some fresh air so it is nothing but it's re continuously replaces air from a space with the fresh air and extracting out the air from the uh, bad air from the room so it's known as ach which is air change hour okay now we come to air condition okay how many of them are saying what is air condition they say what do you say everybody say air conditioning is oh it's cooling it's air cooling okay what else there is other factors are there other things are there in air conditioning okay air conditioning is a device which controls number one temperature okay then number two is humidity okay number three is order number four is dust number five is bacterial and algae number six acoustics and sound number seven pressurization hallelujah now what temperature is controlled what temperature we need to control because in some hot sunny sunny climate your room will have very hot temperature inside so you need to you need to control the temperature inside a room ac is air conditioning is not only controlling the temperature it is also controlling the other items like humidity odor dust bacterial algae acoustics and pressurization okay okay now we got an introduction on the hvac now how the country in this part okay it's it operates okay the what is there from the past present and future what we are doing in in this uh, uh, dubai and uae okay what we usually do in this part of world in as a construction what i am working and what what we are usually doing now okay now say i am working in a con uh, construction sector is industry construction industry what we do okay so you can see the top power, top portions. It's like a idea, design, build, manage, demolish. Okay, everybody knows. In your hometown, people do construction. Okay, they demolish the old building, then build a new building and hand over to the the tenant or tenant or the house owner. Okay, so the house owner brings with an idea. Okay, what he wants to build, he gives his thoughts, ideas. What, how many story in the building is one story, two story, three story, four story building. Then the consultant, the engineer design the building and the contractor who build the building and the maintenance, the operation and maintenance guy who's maintaining the building. And during a period of 30 years or 40 years, then after that, again, they demolish the building. So that is what the cycle we are having in the construction industry. Okay. The engineers who are working in this sector has a lot of jobs in those categories okay the idea which comes from the the owner or the the person who is going to build the building he brings with an idea okay so below side you can see there's inputs and outputs okay i have made a very classification how the jobs are getting on the market okay a lot of engineers in this uh, the college who are learning he wants to have different different categories of thoughts okay I know the mind of the students because I came as a student, now as a working as a manager, I know what the students thought about. Okay. Because everyone has a mind. I want to be working on a shade. I don't want to work on a hot sunny weather. I don't want to work on a 
uh, very dusty environment. I need, so everybody has their luxury comfort zones. Okay? Everybody looks like that. I want to be a person in the, um, uh, working on inside the office with a blue collar job or like a white collar job. I want to be putting a wearing a suit. I look like that. That is my part of job. So I categorize the jobs like that. What what's the guidance I can give you here? Okay, the prerequisite. You can see the prerequisites. The the section in the prerequisites. There is a concept which is coming from the employer. He needs a engineering representative who manage or who develop its concepts. So they need a what is called the, the investor engineer. Okay. Then authority approval. There are a lot of authorities in the part of the country. You can see Deva, Seva, a lot of authorities who are giving scientific bodies or giving a construction. Those needs engineers who are working. They are all disciplining engineers. They might be a structural engineer, might be an electrical engineer, might be a MEP engineer, might be a mechanical engineer. So these are there on that. So when he gets a concept or the build the builder gives a concept, he takes that concept, he develops that and make a design. So if you see the input side, you can be an architect engineer, vacancies will come over there, a structural engineer vacancies will become over there, a building service engineer vacancies coming over there. So who are interested on that, like a very uh, office oriented, like a white color job, putting your suits and go for a good uh, office oriented job, those are the positions, but need an experience to achieve that. You can't straight away go to the white color job, you should have an experience, you should be a number one or you should qualify that, okay? When you comes to the next one, construction sequences, the construction sector, where I am working here. So I can explain here, there are a lot of opportunities. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are operations, which is construction operations. You can see that numbers, quickly I will run through it. There will be an excavation engineer, structural engineers, HVAC, electrical and plumbing engineer, Electric energy station, power uh, systems engineer, infrastructure roads, like a lot of engineering options are here, but you need to again get to gain experience and gain knowledge in that those fields. And so you get a lot of opportunities in this sector. Where I am working as a MEB manager for the construction industry. Okay. Then comes to the outputs. There you have that this is the section where manage comes over here. Manage means I think it's operation and maintenance. Okay, you have a building, and a road to the client, and that building needs a maintenance. There should be a periodical maintenance, weekly maintenance, monthly maintenance, yearly maintenance. So, who manage the building to keep the systems running and periodically going on. So, this is basically the carrier giving a guidance where the jobs lies and where you have a lot of opportunities in this success. Okay, now I'm coming to a cycle. This is called a cycle, construction cycle. What we do in construction industry, okay? Simply, I will go through the HVC quickly. I don't want to take much of your time. You can see the conceptual design. Left corner, you can see a conceptual design. Somebody, the employer wants to make a, give his concept. That concept is, again, developed into a design, detailed design and analysis. Then, based on the analysis, it is getting to be a documentation. The documentation is the drawing what to build, okay? These three sectors are like a white color job. The jo job is mainly or done in the offices. Okay. When it comes to the detailing and fabrication, those is really a construction sector, and that will comes in the uh, on-site based um, work. So there will be a drawing. You are detailing those, and you are doing the construct construction. Those one. Okay. The building, and then there comes the operations and maintenance. We I already talked about it. Okay. Now I am here to talk about the design, okay? Can you see, everyone can see the different photos. I'm just giving an idea what we are in 1980, what we are in 1980, and what we do now, okay? I'm just giving an idea because student, a lot of students do, everybody, I'm getting some of my friends phoning me, my son, my, my, my um, cousin wants to uh, do the um, AutoCAD, he's trying to do the AutoCAD, okay? I will say that don't do AutoCAD. Okay? So, why? I'm giving an idea for that. Okay? You are updating something which everyone does in the past. Okay? And when you do your AutoCAD at, with the latest degree, getting an AutoCAD license and come to the market. Okay? And 
you will be outdated okay so you see here in before 1982 what we are doing in the market okay you can see the guys are sitting on the with a mini drafter a big drawing you know mini drafter we used in engineering colleges we usually take it and we do it in the engineering colleges and we draw our isometric view and everything. Now the world changed. The technology developed. The technology reached to a high. Okay. Now you can see the people sitting on the right corner, sitting on the uh, laying on the floor, doing the design for the buildings. Okay. Here the transformation. What is past, present, and future? Okay. You can see. The left side is the, what we uh, do in the past before 1980s. Guys are sitting in a big hall, doing all drafting on their hands, okay? Then they, we move to the next one is computer aided drafting, that is CAD, okay? You can see the center slide, which says CAD. This is where we are, say, 10 years or 15 years back. All the construction companies have CAD draftsmen, okay? Everybody gets recruited to the CAD. Everybody wants to do the land that CAD. You can see a lot of CAD centers in a part of um, our country and, and all parts of the world, give, uh, you know, getting lot of students educated because we go on good old base of everyone learning. We need to change that. Okay, the, the college, CAT College, have made an opportunity. This is a forum to talk about that. Okay, see the right side. This is called BIM, Building Information Modeling. Okay, it is an advanced version from the CAD, how to CAD. Okay. We will start seeing that in the next slide. Okay, see the 3D modeling. Okay, this is the advanced features of the CAD, which is BIM. You can see a lot of softwares which is now in the market. Our company, we are using BIM for our construction purposes. You can see, you can visualize the person who's standing. You can see this is a mechanical plant and the piping which is connected to the, the equipment. The guys are standing here. The challenge in the AutoCAD 2D drawing, you will see everything in a 2D plan. You not get the elevator to the th uh, third dimension, which is the 3D. So you find a lot of clashes. When you go to the side, you will see clashes, clashes, clashes. The engineer put his efforts to clear these clashes. So he modifies everything. And when you get built outside, it is a different version. From 2D, it goes to another version of the, the drawing. The shop drawing and the buildable aspect drawing is entirely different. Okay. So the beam changes from the 2D to 3D. Okay, see this is another perspective of um, the 3D, how the guy who's standing next to it, he can visualize what the height and everything. Okay, now this is a future, next generation trending now. Okay, this is we got demonstrated. This is a new recent trends in this field of design. Okay, so this is the technology which has come and most of the companies have not started using but they started to think about that, how it benefits the, the industry, okay? You can see the left corner, the guy who's having his um, uh, wearing um, device, which is, which is, he put it on his um, head and he's visualizing how the building looks like. See the image on the right, right side, a lady, which she's putting a laser uh, gun on the wall. She, she, she can imagine what is to be there, what's the finish is going to be there. It comes in his, he can visualize that. Okay, this wall is like this. This is a wall with the glass. This is with the uh, seating table and chair. And this is a, this is a pre-construction. Before constructing that particular area, it gets in his eyesight what it looks like, what it is, what is the thought. Because the, mostly the constructing person doesn't know what is getting built on the later stage. So he gets visualized in the forefront what is going to be there. So this is the next generation which is coming to the industry as in this latest trend. You can see the below, the uh, next slide on the bottom, which is in the 2D drawing, when you visualize that, it gives how the building is going to be. This is like an architectural, structural, MEP, everything is coming in the same similar fashion. Okay, this is the next 4D dimension of the, what is going to be in the design. Okay, this is... Again, this is the latest um, technology which is coming in this market and it is going to be uh, uh, getting adapted in the business because everyone wants to be updated to the latest technology. The construction industry, everybody faces the challenges 
to optimize the cost because everybody gets this, wants to make money on their business. They don't want to unnecessarily spend money and um, uh, you know to get a thing done. They don't want to spend a lot of money to get a thing done. So see this multi-discipline model. See this the wording you can see from that. That's a model. You can see a documentation on the left corner which gives a documentation that what the building, what the information, what is going to be. Next one is sequencing of the job. Okay, that place as a construction person who is working in the industry has to have a sequencing right. Okay, they have to do the basement first. I will give in a very um, uh, catchy way. It's like a basement first. You can't build a floor before you do the basement, right? So it's like a sequencing. So you, what are the activities you need to do first? Okay, you should not bring a material first for the which is coming on the 40th floor than what is in the basement floor. So that is called a sequencing. So you know what the materials has to come on the sequencing way. Okay, then modification. Okay. Think about that. And we are working on an 80-story building at the right now here in this um, in our project. This is having two towers with an 80-story building. It is having mastery materials coming on that. Okay. You should quantify each one. You need nearly about 50 engineers just only to work on the quantifying. Okay. If you have this option from the design. If one one minute it can take quantify you this much steel rebar, this much AC dust, this much piping, this much it quantifies the job within say one minute. Okay, then scheduling. Okay, it will schedule that what has to be done when. Okay, then estimating because you know in this these 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 points why I am giving an idea is before going to the high traces subject. This is the latest technology what we are using in the industry. So you guys guys get an idea. What is coming next? Okay, so I am giving a pre-trial about what is going to be next. Okay, estimating is also a challenge one because everybody wants to give the design and say I need within three days the full quotation estimation for this job. Okay, the engineer has to spend sleepless nights. He has to spend two three days nights over no sleeping making the estimation. Then do that and there will be mistakes or something. But this estimation coming from the drawing, there will be no mistakes. Okay. Then the other one is class de detection, which is easy. There will be no clash, and then on is the visualization. Okay. So guys, I think you got an idea about what is coming in the future times. Okay. So I spent some time because you guys be really looking for this topic on that. Okay. What we do in building phase? See, this is a very construction uh, industry. What they do? They get a plot, construction site. The first green uh, segment, which is a construction plot. Okay. The next slide, uh, you can see that it's a construction plot. Okay. The next one is the excavation area. Okay. The next one is we started building the civil structure works. Okay. Where the structural engineer and the managers, everybody trying hard to do, do that. The next slide, next one, the person who is standing there, the civil structure goes on the high, and the base when we start MEP works. The next slide is handing over. We finish the full tower, finish it, hand it over. This is what we do in construction. Okay, now we go to the our favorite subject. I believe that guys, you got an idea what an industry HVC uh, industry is working. Okay, I my, I really spend little time, take a time to give an idea because most of guys looks for a career guide, guidance uh, from anyone. So I take this opportunity to give an idea. What is HVC? Okay, we talked about that. HVC is um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay. Now we are here. What are the major brands on equipment? Everyone in the part of the world come across the slides, the companies which you brands you can see. You can see York, Hanger, okay, Carrier, York, Train, Macway, LG, Samsung, Daikin, Johnson Controls. Okay, these are the very major brands who place the high HVC equipment in the market. Okay, so I think everyone has come across this thing. Now we go to the standards. Okay, every brand, every equipment, every works have some certifying bodies or some regulation and standards. What they meet, what they should meet. Okay, ASHRAE, this is a uh, ASHRAE standard. Most of the high HVC person should come across this ASHRAE. ASHRAE is American Society for Heating, Refrigeration, Air Conditioning Engineers. So that stands for ASHRAE. Then ACCA, Air Conditioning Contracts, everyone knows that. 
AHRI, this is for cooling coils mostly. The coil manufacturers, they will be looking on the standards. Then SMAGA standards for the sheet metal ducting. AMCA is for the fans. Then CIPC is for the, uh, for the commissioning. So these are the standards for uh, different ways in H1. Okay. Okay, now we go to the certified courses. Okay, you come across. Okay, Frederick sir gave me a good lecture. Okay, fine. Now, how I can get these courses? How I can do? Do I need a training? Do I need a teacher? Do I need an uh, agency to tell me where I can get the courses? Okay, there is a certified course in the markets. If you want to be a beginner, okay, the purpose of my presentation is to learn from a, any guy who's even a computer engineer, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, anyone, they need a basic of HVAC. That's the whole objective of this presentation. They should have a basic idea, a beginning idea for this one. So now I go through the certificate courses. If you are interested, you can learn on diploma courses are there. So you can see HVAC Training Institute in Chennai is there. IDSC, MEP and HVAC Institute in Hyderabad is there. RIT Academy, HVAC in Hyderabad is there. Ishre of Excellence in India is there. AC India Bangalore is there. So those are the certified courses which they are giving more in specific on that. Okay, now comes the factors of a, a human health. Okay, now we go to the on what are the factors? Okay. You have like nine items going to be affecting it. When I sit in a room, okay, one of this nine item, if it is not good, you can't stay in the room. Okay. Okay, what are the factors affects human comfort? Okay, what are the factors? Okay, anyone going going to sit in the room, he either gets a hot weather, hot climate uh, temperature inside. He says, "Oh, it's very hot. I can't stay inside. Oh, it's very humidity. I can't stay inside. Oh, there's no air inside the room. Can we stay outside and uh, get a good air? Yeah. Though know, there's a dust inside the room, I can't stay in the room." Oh, there's a, some smell coming on the water smell, there's a bad smell coming on the room, I can't stay in the room. Oh, there is a bacterial like a fungi is there on the ceiling or the wall, so I can't stay in the room. Oh, there's noise in the uh, room, I can't stay there. Pressurization, adequate lighting. So, out of any one of this thing, you are not going to stay in the room, right? So, you know, here we are, okay. These are the factors which affect a human comfort, okay. How many are going to solve this? That's what I think, okay. So that's what high tracks do. Okay, a designer or anybody who is going to give this comfort zone is called a HVC engineer, design engineer. Okay, so how we are going to achieve that? Okay, dry bulb temperature that is a weather which is coming on the temperature side, humidity, the air movement, order, dust, bacterial and algae, acoustic and sound, pressurization, adequate lighting. We are going to see. And the next slides. Okay, you can see a good house. Oh, whose house is this? It's a nice house. Having a good lighting, having a good furniture arrangement, having a good uh, painting and everything. Okay, but there's no ventilation. Okay, so ventilation is the what topic we are going to check on that. Why? What we need on ventilation? Okay. Now, improved ventilation effectiveness is mandatory to stay in a house. Okay, so. It should be natural, it should be mechanically provided with the filter and dehumidity fed out to air to the breathing space. Okay. You know why ventilation plays an important. Okay. Here in our country, here in Dubai, you can see towers of 80 story building where you it is closed fully with the glasses and with the structures and facade, you not get a ventilation. In India, you can see you can open a window, you can get a fresh air. Okay. And here, if you open a window, you will get a hot air. So you will not easy to open the window. So that is ventilation should be a mechanically or provided filtered one. Okay. Very ventilation based on number of occupants. Okay. I put 200 people in a small room, like a dormitory. Are you going to stay? No. You can't. The thing is, you get suffocated inside the room. So occupants and process loads have an impact. Okay, then consider design that separate ventilation and space air condition. Okay, the, you, the here the HVC design engineer plays a good role. Okay, you can go and stay in a room if you feel very good comfort, like a natural. You're sitting on a very 
what is called the seashore or in your park you can have the ambience there okay a good hvac engineer is the person who give a room the same similar ambience okay so that's a key of a hvac engineer who do the job okay okay utilize heat recovery systems to reduce system size and ventilation energy cost okay because ventilation you know you are pumping in fresh air and taking out exhaust air okay in a air conditioned room everybody say that oh hey, close the door i'm getting the ac cool will go out okay so think about that a room is conditioned air conditioned if you are getting fresh air inside and taking exhaust outside that means you are compromising on your chill the air inside the room so you should have a heat recovery systems we there are a lot of a lot of heat recovery systems in the market which they are doing it out now um, improved ventilation effectiveness okay so you can see uh, items which are there like uh, effective mixing of ventilation net positive pressure provide clean house outdoor airs avoid loading work so these are the improved ways of doing that now here comes the acoustics see how i just uh, get this it's a beautiful slide which explain about a person who is sitting on the top having a Hey, I am getting a very hot uh, vibration on my ears. Please stop. A, a, a flight is running on the top. It's having a noise. So please stop. So these are the acoustics which we, inside when staying in a comfort zone, you should be considered. A designer should be considered. Okay. Now we come to the AC systems. Okay. These are the basics of the things. Now we are going to talk about the AC systems. Uh, sorry, AC systems. Okay. all the ac systems falls under one of these cases okay the case is here i'm just given is non ducted products ductable systems okay you can see air condition in two broad uh, classification non ducted products ductable systems in non ducted systems split air conditioning window air condition okay in india you can see lot of people's house are equipped with the split air conditioning you can see Split air conditioning or window air conditioning. Okay, either it will be a, in a split air conditioning, either it will be a floor mounted or wall mounted, exposed type or high level cassette type. Like this, these mostly you can see in India. Okay, when it comes to the right set ductable system, you can see mostly on high rise buildings where you can see 80 story in a 70 story building, you can see ductable systems because you can't put a split unit outside in the 65 50 floor with a uh, outside unit and you are not able to. Uh, maintain it. You can't go outside and uh, uh, clean it. Okay, so you need to get a helicopter to go and do the maintenance. So that is not possible. So ductable systems are there in the market. Okay, so these are the classifications on the um, uh, air condition. Okay, now we come to this. Everyone knows about the this system. Okay, window AC. Okay, so everyone knows this AC. If anybody doesn't see this AC. You have to see, go to um, see how the AC looks. Okay, this is the plan and the section view of an air conditioning unit. Then the AC look like. Okay, you can see the the supply air is coming from the the corner of the side. This is the area where you can get the supply air, air which is cool air. This is the return. The hot air will be going from the room, go through here, which is through here. Then it goes to the fan section. Then it will get the chilled air, and then again go back to the supply here. So this is the motor which is here having both the fans. The hot air is going through the thing outside here. So this is the section view of a AC unit. Okay, now we are seeing the basic refrigeration side. Okay. Okay, this is this is I just put the slide. This is a little bit going technical and more technical about how the refrigeration side works. Okay, if A mechanical engineer can. If you go through it, if I take time, then it is going to be another subject going to be going on each each line by line. I quickly run through it. You can see this is a basic refrigeration cycle. Your operator is here, condenser is here. So when you have a compressor, which is which will get the uh, superheated compressed air and go through the condenser, and then it runs the refrigerant along back to that, providing the chill air. So I think that the, if someone is interested. Go to this um, um, subject and see, read it. You, you, it's easy to understand as well. Okay, compressor. I just give this is a basic component of the heart of the system. Pumps re refrigerant oil throughout the system. Separates the high pressure side system from the low pressure side. 
If compressor fails, no cooling is possible. That's the basic thing. Condenser, it's get rid of the heat in the system. Evaporator coils provides cold air to the space. Evaporator fan motor located behind the condenser coil. Thermal, uh, thermal expansion wall located at the evaporator coil. Evaporator blower assembly. These are the full assembly which is there. Control types. Okay, now comes to the adaptable split units. Okay, I, I want to finish the uh, presentation in uh, my scheduled time, so I want to run through it. So, adaptable split units. Here you see, I gave a section like how the air condition inside air building in a Middle East and the region where how it's. See, the blue color is the condition space. Okay, and you can see this is the fan coil unit which is hold on the ceiling. And you can see this is the unit which is outdoor unit which is there. It is run through them, the, it is ducted and provided the supply air to there and return air come through the other part of here. So you can see a section here where the outdoor unit and the compressor everything sits outside and the fan balloon which is on here which do a, uh, you know the return air, it takes the hot air back to the unit here and then it runs through the supply air to the section. Okay, now I give this this slide will explain much so you get a uh, good idea on that. The same slide, previous slide. This is like a sectional view in a diagrammatic form, but this is a 3D version. You, it gives a good idea immediately. Okay. You can see the, the next slide. So you can see this is a split unit that duct and decorative type. Okay. Have everyone see this picture? Okay. You might be seeing this in, in all part of the world. The house is equipped with the sun split unit. You can see this is the in some of the houses you can see a yeah, split decorative unit inside the house. Okay. And you can see the outdoor unit which is supported on the wall, hanged on the wall on like this. You can see the next picture on the side. That is a unit with this, which is on the floor, the outdoor unit. Then it runs to the refrigerant piping to the indoor unit. Then it is ducted on this above the ceiling and it is supplying the air to here. This is what how the ACs in the uh, in a villa or any 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 part of world you can see most of these ACs in around the world it is available. So this is a good example for a um, uh, view. You can get an idea of it. Okay, split system again. Now comes to the chilled one. Okay, can everyone see this one? Okay, everybody thinks about oh what is the system? Chilled water is a big system. We can't know about that. It's a very subject. I mean, nobody knows about it, only the engineers, it is a big course, we are, we are not so easy to learn the system. I am saying it's such an easy system. Chill to watch the system is very easy. It's only if you know, how many of them are learning in your degree courses, hydraulics and pneumatics, okay? That is an interesting subject. If you know about hydraulics and pneumatics, okay? And I'm sure you're going to get a good knowledge in the chilled waters. Because there you learn about Venturi meter, orifice meter, Bernoulli's equation, these comes through the life of a HVAC design engineer. If you don't know about the basics of that, you are not going to stay in this field. You need to know. I come across a lot of engineers coming from the uh, colleges. They learn for just, just I just land and forget. That is not going to support you in your life. Okay, so you should know about what is banana equation, what about venturi meter do, wireless meter do. These all are complaining in your works. Okay, so I, again I come to specific to the charges, the chilled water system. Okay, you can see chillers, boilers, cooling towers. Okay, here I can say that. The, this is the chiller, water cold chiller. You can see a cooling tower here. This is the cooling tower. This is the chiller and chilled water pump, then air handling units. See the chiller, how it works like. Okay. So I will go in the next slides how the chillers and chilled water system works. Okay. okay. Again, in sectional view, most of the towers which is having in basements, they put a water cooled children in inside the tower and they run through the piping along the uh, rises and the rises will be going all the way to the top and you have a fan colonnade which is supplying air from the chilled water 
So this is a typical schematic of a chilled water system. I want to know any engineer coming off is seeing this slide, you should be able to speak to anyone about the chilled water system. So you should get a basic idea. Anybody, oh, you know about chilled water system? You should say, yes, I know chillers is there. I know there is pumps is there. There is cooling towers is there. What what does this business, what kind of the role it plays on chillers? Okay. Okay, this is a pictorial representation how it is going to look like. You can see a chiller plant yard on the right left side and chilled water pump. It's a pump, is a pump, like our pumps in our home. So these are the basic elements. Just give a pictorial uh, images of that. Now comes the chiller. Okay. What chillers do? Okay. Chillers, the word chill is means cool. Okay. It provides chill to water. What boilers do? It provides a boiled water. Okay. So chilled water is used for the chilling the temperature, and bringing the temperature down. Okay. So here the type of chiller is chill air cooled chillers. Okay. Air cooled chillers mostly in towers where here you have a rooftop you will have the uh, air cooled chillers okay these chillers will be set at the rooftop and you will have like a um, uh, chilled water piping network distribution network coming to the building now why we need you can see that air cooled chiller advantage is lower installed cost quicker availability no cooling towers it doesn't need a cooling tower for um, uh, for the uh, process less maintenance no mechanical room breakdown okay the next type is water cooled chillers Okay. Where you don't have a tower, you have a plant of say 8 or 10 plants, you have to put it on a roof, you can't put it, but you have to bring it to the building, you have to put it on the basements where you have a plant. Mostly in Dubai, you will have air-cooled or water-cooled chillers. The water-cooled chillers will be on basements and it will be like, you can see the carrier, uh, you can see the nameplate of carrier, a carrier your train, mostly they, they are the, um, the leading brands who are the supply chillers. And these are the chillers which we, water cooled chillers we are using in the, and the high HVC industries. Okay, now comes the pumps. Okay, you produced a chilled water, but you, you need that to be circulated between the towers. Who does the process? Pumps do the process. Pumps will be pumping the water from one area to the other area, or one level to the other level, or from basement all the way to the 80 story building. There are pumps. Okay. Pumps, you that that is that is a subject which you are going through your um, engineering already. You can have an idea. You put your base properly, study properly. You should be knowing about the affinity loss of the pump. You should know how to plot a head versus flow curve. You should be knowing about what are the uh, characteristics of the pump. How are, because you are going if you are going to be a high HVAC person, okay, definitely you should know about the pump. Without knowing how to select a pump, how to, you know, what are the features, what are the characteristics of the pump, how to do the performance, how to select a pump, then you are not, if you don't know, then you are not an HVC. You should be knowing. Otherwise, you can't select a pump. Okay. So, take it, uh, uh, put your uh, studies to fully focus on that pumps. Okay. Next is package type units. Okay. This is simply when you can see in a lot of um, uh, small, small uh, shopping centers, you can see freestanding units, similar like a split unit, which will be there in the thing on the malls. Single package roof type unit, how it is going to be fitted. Okay, here comes the ventilation, air conditioning units. Okay, so ventilation. Everybody is say, okay, ventilation, ventilation. What is ventilation? If you don't have a, design, a proper design on the ventilation, you can't stay inside the room. Okay? If you don't know how the ventilation is not properly done, somebody opened the door, it will not open. If the pressure is not properly maintained, you can't open it. Okay? Then guys will be saying, oh, there is bubble in the room. Because the, when I open the door, it is not opening. When I open the door, it is closing. So something is there. So the HVC designer has to do a proper ventilation inside the room. room so he can do a proper, a person can sit inside the room. Okay, who, who does that process, ventilation? Air handling units, that will does the process. Okay, you can see the AHUs, we simply say as AHUs. Okay, see here, The you can see typical AHU components, I just shown it. So you can see the supply duct, okay, you can see this is a supply duct, number one. Number two is a fan compartment, where you can see the fans, centrifugal fans or whatever fans. 
then there is a flexible connection because the unit and the, this is a dynamically um, uh, functioning uh, unit and there is a rigid, uh, rigid function here so it should not get a transfer the vibration so there should be a flexible connection then fourth one is the cooling coil or heating coil whatever thing then the next one is the filter compartment and the sixth one is return and fresh air duct okay these are the a typical components on the hair unit. Oh, guys, now anybody who's seen this uh, slides, somebody asked me, do you know about HVX? Yes, I know about HVX. Do you know about air and Linux? Yes, I know about air and Linux. Can you tell me about what are the components of the air and Linux? They boldly say yes. Number one, supply deck, fan is there, cooling coil section is there, filter compartment is there. So you can know at least a basic idea about air and Linux. So, just go through the slides again after that. What are the types of air handling units? There are fresh air handling units is there. Then, air handling units is there. So, there are two types of air handling units. And I'm going to present you a typical section of the air handling unit. Okay. How it looks like stability. Okay. Now, I gave you a pictorial representation of the air handling unit. How do the A choose there? What are the section is there? Now, I just give you a very focused spot in the screen. Okay, how ventilation is possible inside here? Okay, I have spent little time. I thought in my mind, giving you a good idea about the uh, the HVAC and ventilation. So the engineers good who is a beginner to learn this um, systems, he should know what is there. Okay, see a, a, a office table and chair on the bottom base uh, downstairs here. Two people are sitting, it seems like a two people sitting in a room and you can see a, see a, above the ceiling. There will be a ceiling above the office room and you will have a duct which is coming over the section here, with supply duct, and see this is a riser. Okay, any HE storage building, this is a typical section, it will have a 80 or 50 or 40 storage building. Okay, you will have a air handling unit on the top, see the section here at the top, okay then you have a riser. These are called duct risers. Okay. Any building have a duct riser which is running from the top of the plant room down going to all level, individual levels. There will be a branch off which is coming from the branch and you will have a EAVs or fan coil units which will provide the air to here and there will be a return. See this hole is the return. Once you get a air supply, a cooled air here, then there will be a return air going the heat hot air is going back to the rice right here. See, this is the section return, return duct here, then going all the way back to the machine. See here the machine. So this is the filter here, damper, and see, this is the damper, HVC damper, which will pro provide the open and close, regulate the flow, and it goes to the filter section here, and then it goes to the cooling coil here, and this is the cooling coil, two cooling coils there, and here you see here, this is extracting. There, there are some percentage of air, they are taking exhausting out. And this is some percentage of air which is coming in. So this is a fresh air and this is the exhausting out. So you maintain a ventilation rate inside the room. So a person sitting in the room will get a certain amount of fresh air, cooled air and ventilated air inside this building. So this is a typical sectional view to give about how the air handling unit works inside a tower. Okay. You can see this is a fan section which is supplying the, pushing the air from the outside, push to the riser. Respective riser, this is what I take as a cut view of one section, but it will be going to the respective. Look, this is the air handling unit, machine, okay? So, you can see that, how many of them can see this air handling unit? Okay, the next slide, you can see this is a, this is a typical air handling unit. The below picture is the one which shows about the view of air handling. The blue color is the, uh, you look it from outside. Okay, this is the air handling unit, which is placed on the rooftop. Okay, anyone say that I have not seen the air handling unit, somebody asked you. Okay, have you seen, a, do you know any air handling unit? Yeah, I know. How it look like? It will have an aluminum uh, profile on the corner. It will have a panel on the sides. You will have a door, locks and everything. Yeah, there will be a damper on the sides. You can see these are the dampers which regulate the, these, these are the mechanisms to regulate the flow. There should not be a damp air coming just inside. It should be regulated flow here and the above picture is about the sectional view of the fresh air handling unit. This is the machine 
which provides a ventilation to the room. Okay, now to see this, explain about the section. This is one of the subject. Uh, I'm just touching the basic. If if somebody is interested later on to know about what is air unit in depth, I can give my suggestions and ideas, and you, you can approach the college and Sky Engineering College, and uh, they will be communicating with me, and I can give you a full idea about and uh, any doubts on this air handling units. Okay, so now you can see two compartmentation. There is there is a fan section on the below. There is a fan section on the top. The below section is a fan which is, takes the fresh air. See, this is the air which comes from the outside, goes through the filter section, then the, goes through the cooling coils. See, this is the cooling coils. You can see the copper um, brown uh, color, which is the cooling coil. This will be the chilled water which will be supplied to the cooling coil. And takes, if you are getting a hot temperature, say about 46 degree, it goes through the cooling coil and it cools and goes to the fan chamber, which push the air outside and it comes through the uh, outside and it runs through the building. Which you can see in the previous slide, also the section which we use, explains you. But see there's a chamber on the upper side, which is having again a fan section and again a filter section. What does it do? Nothing but it, it extract. You know, you are supplying fresh air, but it should not pump inside a space. It should be taken out. There should be a balance, pressure balance inside the room. It is not just to supply push air inside the room. It is also to take air from outside, uh, from the space and regulate a balanced air inside the room. So that does the purpose. Okay. Okay, I think you got an idea of um, air handling units. Now we go to the metal ducts. Okay. These are metal ducts. Uh, which you can see the AC equipment which is on the um, ceiling which is supplying air to the um, ducts to the respective areas and terminals. So you can see these are the next slide. You can see these are the registers or grills which is every ceiling you will have a grill. See, I think you see in um, uh, shopping malls or cinema theaters you can see this type of grills on the walls which is providing air. These are a uh, fancy items which is coming on the wall. Okay, now comes quickly on the design. I am going to just quickly touch. There is no design. You can't get on, say, like within 10 minutes. You have to learn from basics, basics, then develop, develop, develop. You will have to go. It is not, say, one 30 minutes you can learn the full design. You get the basic, put your, apply your thoughts, then learn, learn, learn. Okay, what is HVC design? That is a cooling load, how you see. This one picture explains everything about the cooling in Senegal. See, a person sitting on the drawing table, okay, he is having a window on the, uh, on the wall, okay, and that wall is having a sign which is from the east uh, uh, direction which is faced, facing on this table. Because everyone who is weaving a drawing, he puts his table right, he needs to get sufficient lighting on the table, okay. Then you see the lighting on the top. Then you see that rooftop see here the rooftop okay the sun which is getting on the rooftop then there's a partition wall see the computer which is there then glass conduction exterior walls okay so a hvc designer when he designed a building okay he should consider all these factors okay if you not consider these factors in the design then the ac either it is over designed or it is under designed Okay, that's why we need a HVC design person who need to consider all this uh, components in his design. Okay, here comes the heat transfer. Okay, I think a lot of people in the mechanical engineering, mostly some of the people, oh, I don't like this heat transfer, HFT, thermodynamics, thermal engineering. I want to stay away from that. Okay, guys, any engineer, you can't escape from this. If you are a mechanical engineer, you have to go through this subjects because the basic is the mechanic the basics of mechanical engineering is thermal engineering, thermodynamics. You are going to come across in part of life. I used to say thermal engineering and thermodynamics are my my worst subjects, which I during my college days I say this is a very worst subject. Oh, I don't want to learn. It's like full of equations, lot of things, but. Finally, I'm working on the same field. You need to know about the basics. Spend time with your uh, HODs, spend time with your professors, lectures to understand what the basics. 
if you learn about the basics then the subject you can see thermal engineering book is like around old lifco dictionary of like around 1500 pages but that is very easy if you know about the basics here is methods of heat transfer okay you can see heat transfer is only three types either conduction convection and radiation so you are going to play with those things in your hvc design okay now here comes to give a pictorial you know explanation on conduction convection radiation okay you can see a guy touching a hot pan okay so he is getting heat energy transferred by direct contact okay i'm just giving a very fundamental explanation so you will be get it uh, immediately to your brain convection energy transferred by mass uh, motions of molecules any you are having a pan you have a water you heat it so the heat is getting transferred to the molecules so this this sometimes i used to talk to my engineers also you know these are the basic fundamentals we use in hvc we say talk about that now see is radiation energy is transferred by electromagnetic radiation so these three are the heats which comes in play of a hvc design okay this is the same explanation what i talked in words it's the same thing now here comes the units okay that three things comes falls under this btu refers to british thermal unit okay so everyone knows about btu you are going to you keep your basics on btu you study well what is btu because you if you are hvc designer you are hvc engineer you are going to face what how much btu per hour how much btu it is this room have you are going to uh, talk every day on this subject if you are going to any hvc industry okay here comes okay this is a psychrometric chart everybody comes through this chart oh this is a new graph how oh, i am going to learn about oh this presentation is going really too much this is a what is this chart very basic chart and very easy chart and this is the any hvc person if he is having a room we are come in part of our a daily life sometimes they people say oh, the room is not cooling well oh what is the problem so what we do we take the temperature measurements the guy who is a hvc designer who goes with the temperature um, thermometer go and measure the temperature on the room then he plot it to the psychrometric chart and see what, how the comfort zone is see you, the hatched portion is the comfort zone any room which is not falling in this temperature not falling in this condition then it will be a hot spot okay so to do that any 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 hvc engineer he cannot say that oh this room is condition uh, cooling well this room is not cooling well he has to apply those condition temperature condition on the psychrometric chart you can see that dry bulb temperature which is coming on the bottom on wet bulb temperature on the uh, top and then the humidity ratio you have to take the temperature conditions and then the enthalpy curve you can see that this is the enthalpy curve so you can say how much tonnage of um, heat you are going to take it from this this is a little bit i am not touching much in detail but it is a very interesting um, uh, uh, psychrometric chart you people are knowing about it okay this is what how when you design a building heat conduction through surfaces then sunlit surfaces how they when you are having a rooftop how we are going to uh, consider that you have what what the design you are going to do solar radiation how it is going to transfer in the untreated glass you can see how much transfer you see the sun when you have a glass without a uh, treated or untreated glass it go 89% uh, transmitted through the building 6% is reflected 5% is absorbed so whatever heat it is from the sun it directly goes inside the building so it should have a treated glass okay heat generated by people everybody generates a heat a person sitting in a room he generates metabolic heat okay so that is again 60% heat generated by people that's a chart how much people uh, what what's a um, heat uh, generator heat generated by equipment coffee maker printer typewriter okay now we comes to the rule of thumb okay i got a good lecture from you sir now tell me how i can do a design okay everybody who are viewing this um, presentation now they want we are coming to the end of the session okay 
you gain something okay i don't do your presentation now okay i done the presentation now i want to know how to design it so you should design it it should be benefited okay somebody ask you hey you gone through the presentation do you know how to design okay definitely i should give some rule of thumb that is how to design okay okay so as a rule of thumb okay you should read the following things one hp is one kilowatt is a basic thing one ton of cooling is 12000 btu okay here comes any machine when you have an air conditioning machine you can see in the first slides very first slides you can see split units decorative units there it mentions btu 12000 btu per hour say 24000 btu per hour so 20000 24000 means it's a two ton machine okay so one ton is equal to how much cfm it's for the 400 cfm then what is cfm everybody wants to know what is cfm because you can hear from any guy from a voltas or blue star they say hey that is a uh, 4000 cfm machine this is 2000 cfm machine this is 800 cfm machine you are when you are staying and watching next to you can say that yes you are talking 800 cfm means two ton machine so you know 400 cfm is equal to one ton okay so these are the terminology we speak as a hvac unit now cfm means what building volume in cubic feet by minute air changes okay that is called cubic feet per minute okay you you know how to measure the cubic right you have a 3 meter by 3 meter room okay and a 3 meter height then that is a cube so how much cube of air, air it is there and you are having how much air changes you are doing in a room so that's why i call them cfm okay i will tell you a rule of thumb everybody wants to know oh there is a rule of thumb i want to know okay i will give you tips the rule of thumb is per square feet you can take it as like 2.5 cfm per square feet okay any area if there is a very shaded is there normally a shaded per room is there okay you can say okay how many square feet is there okay that is a 2.5 cfm or 2.5 to 3 cfm per square feet for a 3 meter 3 meter height building you can take it as a rule of thumb okay you can select a tonnage of machine and if it is a retail section if it is a shop you should take 380 square feet per ton per cool okay why we take that because lot of people comes to the building goes out of the building door opening closing so that is happening there so you should have that uh, basic idea on that design so whenever you go to somebody wants to select a machine for your home okay in your room it's a 3 meter by 3 meter room but don't think that 3 meter means 3 meter means 10 feet 10 feet by 10 feet or 10 12 feet by 12 feet if you want to select a room and you have a 3 and a half meter height you need to take 2.5 cfm per square feet okay a basic rule of thumb and apply it and say that how many tonnage you can straight away take a select a machine you can go to the shop and say i need a two and a half per ton machine or two ton machine please give okay it doesn't need a hvac engineer to design it okay good so that's a rule of thumb now the question section any questions okay i think you uh, the viewers listeners had gone through the presentation now it's a section of the questions can you yes ask the yes, questions sir. thank you sir thank you yes, for thank you uh, for the session now i request dr sundarajan sir to post the questions sir yes sir uh so it is a very excellent presentation a uh, uh, really uh, uh, thought provoking session uh here uh, here there is a certain questions sir shall i ask them yeah go ahead so shall you hear hear me yeah go ahead yes. go ahead i can hear you hello sir please ask oh. the question yeah sir. i can hear you hello can you hear me can you hear me yes sir the first word yes Yes, 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 yes. Suresh, uh, my Swami is asking, what is the software using for the uh, what is the software using for this HVAC? Okay, there are a uh, uh, lot of softwares. Okay, basically earlier we used to do on um, uh, on um, Excel Excel sheets. Now, latestly we are using Carrier software. Okay, uh, E twenty software we are using and Hap software, which we just. 
you you just input the values like floor area and all those things um, uh, how much rooms and all the things it will give you a heat load how much tonnage you need the uh, uh, tonnage of machines you need it so it's a, it's basically a hap software we are using for heat load do i answer the question or it is a, for the thermal load yes sir second question this is from vishnu nambudri what are the recent trends in energy efficiency as per related to hvac operation okay the, there are a lot of optimizations is going on okay the main thing is about the spending of cost okay this chilled uh, cool energy when you are doing in ventilation lot of chilled energy is going as outside as a extract air okay that means that much amount of electricity you are spending on running the plants so what we have latest trends is heat recovery system okay like uh, heat recovery wheels there are lot uh, heat recovery wheels which will consume that energy in the thermal wheels and reuse it so that is one of the energy conservation system which we are using on the uh, as a part of heat recovery sorry the uh, what is called latest trend in um, heat recovery and another one is uh, heat pipes okay that doesn't need any uh, any mechanical or any electrical power to run it heat heat pipes is like a evaporator tube which will um, pre cool and pre reheat the um uh, through the air and give that uh, the console that energy so that is another latest trend which you are using and there is another thing is about the vfd because when you run a plant the pumps sometimes in the day and night okay night doesn't need any or um, uh, you know hot usually the planet will not be hot in the night the night will be like a uh, very no peak load it's off peak load they will have a peak load so to offset that nobody is selecting a plant to run in the high uh, uh, peak loads so there is a variable frequency drives which is optimize the speed of the pump that is one of the energy conservation system okay another vfd drives is one of the system then there is a thermal storage system which is another system which is uh, for mostly used by the um, uh, what is called the uh, cooling plants they are used for thermal storage system so these are the recent trends which we are using in this hvac industry do i answer the question yes sir thank you sir thank you sir and this is from bobby say bobby uh, from cac institute of technology why okay. fresh air handling units are used mostly in dubai uae and not in india okay it's a good question okay it's a very sensitive question why i'm saying is see in india you have uh, usually the building with the maximum as a four story or six story building okay you will get a good um, ventilation here okay it doesn't need a uh, forced ventilation if you like if you are saying see when why we are getting a chilled temperature in uh, kodaikanal or uh, uti because when you go high you you are you are getting very chilled here because of the atmospheric pressure conditions now same eight storied building when you are having a 150 300 meters high okay and extremely uh, outside uh, humid air so you your building is enclosed fully okay the building doesn't have it sealed fully so you should have some treated fresh air to the building so it is normally when not ventilated if you open a fresh air outside in the window immediately you have a jung of hot air entering in the uh, building and it will you will face condensation you will face uh, hot to hot to the temperature will not brought down so these are the factors so that's why uh, there is a ventilation air, air air conditioning equipment which will be supplying a treated fresh air to the building that's why we are using in the middle east i mean the gulf regions where you have a extremely high weather so treated fresh air to the building in india we are not using in india we are just cooling it out we just make a air conditioning ducted decorative unit to cool the temperature do i answer the question yes sir yes sir thank you sir uh, shall i continue another question sir yeah you can go ahead yes sir the same bobby from cs technology Uh, first one is ac units selected in india for example two ten okay will it work with performance to deliver to two ten in it dubai definitely one not. ac unit selected in india for example two ten 
will it work with the performance to deliver 2 ton in dubai no definitely not the reason why is see ac units uh, when you say 2 ton which worked in india the same 2 ton unit when it comes to dubai it will not work it will work only for 1.5 ton you can ask what the reason okay oh. here the answer the reason is in india the maximum ambient temperature goes up to maximum like 40 or say 45 or 46 okay here in dubai in the middle east the maximum temperature goes up to 52 50 like that in some extreme high conditions so the ambient outside air condition is the designing factor which which derate the unit so if you have a unit running for 2 ton in india that deliver the 2 ton capacity in performance but when it works in uh middle east in dubai qatar um, bahrain it won't deliver the same two ton it will go with the 1.5 ton what we need to do is the room building load if you have a two ton capacity then you select a machine for two and a half ton most of the brands which will they give in a performance chart saying that see the ambient condition that's what the hvc designer do when he see the ambient conditions of the machine then he select the machine according to that uh, nominal capacity Okay, fine, sir. Thank you. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. This is the last question from the audience. Ah, uh, this is Mohammad Yazid. Hello, sir. First of all, thank you for your precious time for this presentation. In AC, I only know about the gas of R two two and R four one zero A gas. My doubt is yeah. the gas is used in bio construction air conditioning. Okay. Shall I repeat, sir? Repeat it. Yeah, in AC, I only know about the gas of R22 and R410A gas. My doubt is the gas is used in big construction. Sorry, big construction air conditioning. Big no. construction air conditioning. Sorry. Okay, this is he. His question is, I believe he talks about the refrigerant. Okay, the refrigerant. See, yeah, big yeah, construction yeah, yeah. industry. Yeah, the big construction industry. See this R twenty two or one forty three gas. These are used by the chillers. Any compressor works with only with the refrigerants. Okay, for high rise buildings, the from the chiller, the heat transfer fluid. I can say that from the chiller to the distribution to the fan coil units, it is done by chilled water because you can't pump a refrigerant for eighty storey or sixty storey building. You can pump the liquid for this uh, for the high rise. Because refrigerant doesn't have a compressor, the refrigerant compressor cannot pump that much uh, refrigerant through the building. And again, the refrigerant, if there is a leak, okay, in the piping network, then the whole system get down. If there is a leak in the chilled water, it will not get down. Because what will happen if there is a leak in the water? One is we have a pressurization unit which pumps the water when there is a leak, so it will maintain the system pressure. throughout the planned operation second is if refrigerant is leaked okay that's another process called uh, you need to vacuum the system again do the pressure test and identify the leak again you have to uh, brace it again you have to do again you have to do vacuum and again charge the refrigerant so these are the very minute things on the operation and maintenance so no designer or in most of the designer will prefer to have a chilled water system in the high rise network if it is like a Two story, three story, the four story building. They go with the refrigerant um, system. So that's why the refrigerant plays only on the low rise buildings, and that is easy for operation and easy for the uh, investment or easy for investing your capital. It is the, co the cost is very less. Do I answer the question, and that, or you are looking for yeah. more? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your fantastic response uh, for the, all the questions. It is a very pleasant day for us. And now this is the time for the vote of thanks. I would like to call Mr. Nanda Kumar for the vote of thanks. Okay. Be before before going to that, uh, any any comments on the presentation? Anything on um, very bad, good, or anything? It's everything is going fine. It's very good presentation, sir. We are uh, thank you, thank you, wondering man. about your. We are wondering about your presentation. It's very good. Right. Sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for your. Uh, sir, Fredrik, sir, when you come to India, please yes. visit our SCAD Engineering College once, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Now it's the time for what? Thanks for your invitation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jamal, sir. First of all, it is a great privilege for me for giving what of thanks for this webinar organized. First of all, I like to thank God for protecting us in this pandemic situation. 
and making us to gather knowledge to these webinars. Then, then I would like to thank our resource person, Dr. Frederick John Charles, MEP manager, Alec Dubai, for your valuable time in accepting our invitation and giving this wonderful webinar to us on the topic HVAC engineering design and application. So really this presentation is very useful for participants and they can enrich themselves in developing research projects in HVAC engineering design field for giving project ideas for our final year students also. Next, I would like to thank our SCAD management authorities, our principal sir, our agent sir, our GMD sir for giving us permission to organize this webinar. And also I extend my hearty thanks to our Department of Mechanical Engineering and HOD Mr. M. Kannan. Dr. M. Kannan for giving your entire support and also I thank all the each and every faculty of Mechanical Engineering Department for your direct and indirect support to help in and coming to webinar also. And also sir, I also I extend my hearty thanks to all the participants came here for your patience and listening and for your valuable comments for this webinar. I hope this webinar is useful to you in, all, in your future. Thank you one and all. What do you Thank you, sir. Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, so now we can close the session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.